So if you can do football analytics or football statistics, the first thing you need really are some tools to do them with. And I think people often don't appreciate that everything you need to do football analytics, apart from data, every, all the tools you need, they're all free. And what I'm going to do in this video is just show you where to get them, where to download them, and even show you actually a little bit of free data you can download too. Now, well, if I can just share my screen with you for a minute, then we'll do that there. And I've got Google up here. And basically, the tool that I recommend that you get hold of is something called Anaconda. And I just type Anaconda into, um, into Google. Anaconda, the world's most popular data science platform. There we go. We click on it. And a lot of exciting things about data science there. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and let's just go down to individual edition. Download now. And we need to accept a load of things. And click on download. And what comes up here is, this is probably the only choice you have to make, is between Python 3.7 and 2.7. Now 2.7 is the older version of Python, of course, the number's lower. And unless you've got a specific thing that you want to run in the older version of Python 2.7, I'd go for 3.7. And then you just click on download and away you go. Now, Anaconda is quite a big package and we're gonna see why it's such a big package very soon. But it contains pretty much everything you need to, need to have. You can see it's available for Windows, Mac OS and Linux. And I'm downloading it for Windows. Oh, no, I'm downloading it for Mac OS, which I've got on my computer. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole process of installing it. Now I'm inside Anaconda. I've opened it up. And what you see is a list of different packages that are available inside it. I don't actually know what all of these are. I know what the important ones are. But inside Anaconda Navigator, you've got both tools for running Python and you've got tools for running R. And those are the two programming languages that are going to be central to almost everything we, we've done. If you've seen Sud's video, what he uses is R, and he uses, he quite quickly recommends that you should look at R Studio. And R Studio is all the way down here. I haven't got it installed on my computer. I do have R. I'm a, you'll find out I'm a bit more of a Python fan than an R fan. I do have R, but I already installed it previously uh, using a different account. But if you want to install R in, as part of your Anaconda package, you just install there as well. But what we're going to concentrate on today is Python. But the thing I'm going to concentrate most on is Spider. So I'm going to launch Spider. So once you're in, in, in Python, you'll see the following things. You'll see basically three different windows, and you have options of various things up here. You have these three different windows, and they're basically as follows. So the, one of the windows here, that's where your program is. And you'll see here, I've just got opened up a library from FC Python, one of the free available resources for, for Python programming for football. So this is where you have your program in here. Then down here, this is very important, this is your console. This is where you run the instructions and you see the output of each instruction you, you run. And then up the top here, the third window, well, that's got, it's got help just now, but what's going to be most useful is the variable explorer. That's going to be where we can see the information, the data that we've got inside our program. We've also got file explorer here where we can actually look and load up different different things as well but but the variable explorer is going to be what's most useful to us and so i've got a few different windows here i've got these are a couple of things i'm preparing for some future lectures i've got loading data here this is for loading in some stats bomb data we're going to look at some uh, plotting heat maps and so on but what i want to do just now is just give you a feeling for how the how the actual program works because i think there's always sort of this kind of barrier from downloading these types of things and just getting going. So it's really easy to get going. I'm just going to start a new program here. I'll call it, I don't know. I think you're meant, you're meant to do Hello World, aren't you? So I'm, I'm going to I'm going to call this one. Um, let's just call this one Hello World.py. 
And you know what it's going to do? It's going to do print hello world. Brilliant. And then, now this is probably the, the different bit. So there's various buttons here. This is a different bit, I think, from normal programming. Normally you would run your program and we could, we can run the whole program just doing this. But what you tend to do actually when you're programming for data science is you tend to do a lot of sort of copying and pasting over to here to see how things work. So I could just copy and I can paste over into this window, the hello world, and it will do exactly what I said. And then, then you can do things like this. You press the up button and you get to do, whoa, got a bit too many. Cut, I cut and paste a bit. Let, let's just do this a little bit more carefully. So copy across here, hello world, and then it prints hello world. And if I press the up button, I can do hello world again. And I can also just edit things here. So a lot of the work I do actually just involves trying things out in the terminal. So um, hello YouTube, I don't know, is that the new hello world? And then you can put things like my name is David and you can just adjust these things and do these types of calculations. So actually last night I was, in fact it's probably still in the memory, I was calculating the space, the area of my bathroom or the tiles of the bathroom in order to find out how many tiles we need to order for our new bathroom. And if I just go keep up going up here, here is the, um, I think in centimeters, whoops, I didn't define the variables, but I, I, I did these sorts of things. So I was looking at height and this is, a, this is basically the area of one of the walls of my bathroom. And I can actually find that, so this full height variable is like that. So, and, and now you actually see it's appeared here as well. So we can see the variable and we can see the value. This was in centimeter squared. So if you've done high school maths, you'll probably be able to tell me how many meters squared of tiles I need to, it's probably eight meters squared of tiles I need to order. Anyway, the point is that it's, it's a very interactive process. It's not so much that you write a program and then you run the program. A lot of what you do inside here is an interactive process, a sort of back and forth, asking the computer things and getting information back. And I think that's really defines a lot of what data science is. Data science is like moving backwards and forwards between the data and the program. Some programming, some, some using the data. Oh yeah, yeah, there's one thing I wanted to say. Yeah, there's one, one other thing I wanted to say here. Instead of copy and paste, another little thing you can do is you can press this button here and that's run current call and that will just run these things over and over again. Um, and that's often very helpful because you don't want to run all the code together. If you, if you watch Sud's um, video the other night, he was doing exactly that. He's selecting parts of the code, running it in the terminal. And that's a very good point here. This is running in Python, but the principles when you're using R Studio, for example, are pretty much the same. You, you have your program up in your left-hand window. You can copy and copy the code into here and run it. And then you also have a, have a variable storage thing. So, so there is this kind of thing like, okay, I've set up, now I've got my Python environment all set up and I know what I'm doing. There's a kind of like, what do I do next moment then? Because you've got it all set up. You're very happy with how it looks. You've got to kind of like think about how you're actually going to learn to program, how you're actually going to get better at Python. Now, I actually only learned to program in Python about a year and a half. Well, I've sort of learned over time in some way. So about, about sort of six months ago, I actually felt that I was becoming more comfortable in using Python. And the way I learned it really was by looking at other people's examples. I know that if you come to university and we teach you programming, we like start with the basics and build up, show you how you do everything. But there is sort of another way of learning programming and it's the copy and paste way of learning programming. And we all know about it and that's how, that's how I learned to program in Python. I could program otherwise and it's kind of what I recommend that you should do too. And what I recommend you do is you think about something quite reasonably simple that you'd like to, to do what a, a project that you'd, you, you imagine would be quite interesting to start with. 
and then you see if somebody else has done the same project. And here I've got my Hello World program and I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I've done Hello World. I've done, that seems, that's fine. What should I do now? Well, okay, so imagine I think, right, what, it's football I'm interested in. I'll see if I can plot a football pitch. So I go over to Google and I think, I just type in plot football pitch in Python. Of course, I, this is sort of, I, I know what's going to come out of this, this search, or at least I have some idea what's going to come out of this search. But I promise you, type in any simple task you'd like to learn how to program in Python, and something interesting and useful will come out. So I do that, plot the football pitch in Python, and I've got a load of stuff. Often towards data science comes up very, um, very high. Uh, this guy, this guy works for Opta, I think, Peter Mc, um, McVeaver. He's done one for plotting x, y coordinates um, in Python. That's very nice. A couple of those types of things. This was the one I was looking for. It's come a bit lower down in the search than I thought it would, but there's a, a nice one by FC Python, which has a step-by-step -step guide to drawing pass maps and to drawing pictures in, in Python. But actually any of these links, what, what I'd suggest is you just click around a few of these links and see what they're trying to do and look at the code they're trying to use. And I kind of decided I was going to use this um, FC Python one. And this isn't exactly what I wanted. What I wanted was visualization. And it was uh, plotting a football pitch, draw pitch map. That's what I want. I think what's very nice here is that it just has the code here. So um, Jamie, who has FC Python, he has described the steps you need to uh, plot a football pitch. And you can just copy and paste the code first into here, or maybe I'll make a new, new file. And I'll put it there. I want to run it, the whole thing. So I'll call this plot pitch, blah, blah, blah. There we go. And it's running this thing. Now, Often you'll see at the start of any Python program, there's all this import stuff, and these are importing different functions. So everything's sort of built on something else. So there's a whole library inside Python called matplotlib, which has really nice plotting functions. One little thing I want to say about that is I've, I've installed a lot of these, these functions already. It might be that your Python installation says, oh, I don't have that um, particular um, package. What you can do in that case is you just go down to your terminal, either on your Mac or on your PC, um, and you type conda install, and then you copy the name of the um, thing you're interested in installing, and it will install it. So it comes up quite a lot that you have these sort of libraries that you, you that somebody's used and you want to run their code, and so you can just install it. So my, my thing is coming up and telling me I've already got this thing installed. I can proceed anyway, see what happens. There you go, it's downloading the um, updated version of that library if there's, if there's something missing. There's also a command called pip and conda. Uh, there's all, you're meant to sort of take care of your computer and not install in lots of different ways, but I just look online to see what I need to do in order to install these packages and then I, just try it and then occasionally everything falls apart and I reinstall my conda. That's probably not not to be recommended. But basically you need to you'll need to install these packages now and again using the terminal. I'll close that. Maybe I need to make a video or somebody else needs to make a video about how to how to install the right packages in your conda thing. Um, okay so what I've done is I've, I've looked at the FC Python web page and the way to learn is just to go through what he's written here and copy and paste across. I think I'll just I'll just do this. So I'll take these sorts of things. And this basically sets up the figure. And you can see here in the code that he's got the coordinates of the pitch and he's going to plot it. So I'll just run all of that. And we can start to see how we've got slightly different defaults there, but you can start to see how the outline of the pitch is plotted. And it's really just to continue going through these examples and run them and see, see how they work. Now, there's, there's this kind of balance and trade-off here, because if you just sit and copy and paste, 
then you won't learn anything. I mean, that's the, that's the problem. But if you copy and paste and try and change things slightly, what I'd recommend with this particular one, I don't know why, but if you get down to the bottom here, he's not actually plotted any goals. So for example, you could say, well, I'm going to do his pitch and I'm going to plot some goals. One thing that I did recently is I just wanted to plot the penalty area. So I took some of his code and I adjusted it so that I could just plot the um, penalty area. So I think that's the way that I think is the best way of learning, that you take something somebody else has done and you make a small adjustment to it so that you begin to understand how the code works. There's advantages and disadvantages of this approach, but I think it's a sort of fun way to, to get going, especially when you're sitting there with your hello world in front of you and you're thinking, well, okay, hello world, how will I make the next step? that's the best time to start and doing this sort of copy and paste programming. Okay, so that brings me to the last thing that we need. We've got our tool set up, now we need some data. And quite a lot during this course, we're going to use two data sets in particular. One of them comes, it's all, it's all event data, so what happened on the ball. One of them comes from StatsBomb, and the other comes from Scout. and I think Pretty much if you're serious and you want to do stuff, you should download this data because it's going to give you something to play around with, to test your ideas and to develop. So let's have a look at some of the, so let's have a look at the, some of the available data sources. Now StatsBomb have put their data up in GitHub. So you can either access it directly through the, the StatsBomb website, or you can just go into GitHub and you can find their open data set and here we can see that it's, it's all available here this is sort of this is a repository lots of lots of data is kept in these repository in github bitbucket is another one of them all the data is kept there and you can basically get it by clicking on this download button you click on download and you can download it to a zip file or you can open it in the desktop and i've already downloaded this data so i won't do it now but you just download it and the whole data set will be put in a folder on your computer, which will allow you to work with it and use it. Now, this one's pretty big. It's some number of megabytes. It'll take a little while to download. But download it, and then you can start to work on it. And we'll, we'll be using that in future uh, parts of the course. Another data set, um, which is a little bit less well known, is on Figshare. And... It's um, a data set from Scout, which is another data provider. And it has five different seasons of the Premier League. And it's in this sort of format, which isn't quite as nice as the GitHub thing, I think, where you download it. But you basically click on files individually, then you can download them somehow. Now I've forgotten exactly how you, how you click to download it. But you can click and download these um, data sets individually. It wasn't that anyway. <laughs> it certainly wasn't that. Okay, so you downloaded player data sets, team data sets, match data sets, but a lot of event data is there. There's five seasons of top flight football. What's nice about the Y Scout one as well is there's actually a scientific article written about this data set. And so it gives a very nice summary of what you can do with it, what types of analysis are interesting, how it's collected, and so on. And so there's quite a well recorded. Uh, peer-reviewed background of how the, the different data is, is collected. There is less people have worked on this so that there is a disadvantage. More people have worked on the StatsBomb data and, and, and written different code to do things there, so there's an advantage there. Uh, but basically, either of these data sets, and we'll be using both of them in this course, are really useful starts um, for doing this. And that's it for downloading data and for getting going with your, your tool set. So if you're interested in watching the next videos, then you... <laughs> I was going to do this uh, thing where you hit subscribe or whatever. No, I'm not going to do that. And what I'm going to say is that if you're interested in following the course, I would try and download Anaconda now, open up Spider and try and get going with it. And I'd also download the two available data sets and see if you can just manage to load them in. We're going to go at the start of the next lesson. We'll say how, show how we load these, these data sets in. And see if you can load them in and investigate the different variables that are there. Cool. Okay. See you later.